Then I get on my pet dragon and I fly to Chicago for the Bulls yeah. game. What is going on, Zen Dude and Dudettes from all over the world? And I say all over the world because we just made a Facebook post in the Four Week Challenge group and we we're like, yo, what countries are you guys from? And I think we have 235 responses right now, at least like 60 different countries. It's bananas. 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 This bananas. is going crazy. I'm really pumped on all of you guys. I'm here in Columbia still. Dan is in Pennsylvania, and we're about to do episode number 15? 15. Pennsylvania is in the United States, by the way. In the United States, episode number 15 of... No, Ask 16. 16. 16. Episode yeah. Sweet 16 of Ask the Zen Dudes. And since it's Sweet 16, I got a special gift for you today. Ha <laughs> ha. No, I don't. Get into the <laughs> no gifts, I'm just playing. Um, I'm Brandon. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we get into the episode, Venice Beach, this upcoming Saturday, uh, s May 27th, 2017, Venice Beach, 12 p.m., be there or be square. First three people get free crossroads. Ah, that's interesting. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but the first five people at my meetups are getting crossroads. Wow. So you think you're better than me because you're giving away more? <laughs> All right. West Coasters, don't worry. We're bringing, we're bringing mad ropes, okay? We're going to do more than one meetup in Venice Beach. Please believe that. Um, so many meetups in Venice Beach. This is the first of many, but we wanted to start, right? Dan's going to be on the East Coast. I'm going to be on the West. No, Dan's going to be on the West Coast. Dan's going to be on the East Coast. I'm going to be on the West Coast. Question number one from Shay. What's up, my dude? Q for Dan Dog. How do you get out of your head and into the present moment in social situations? Dude, that is a crazy, that's a great question. For those of you who don't know, um, I used to struggle with social anxiety really bad, and admittedly, I still do. Like, sometimes when you're talking to me, I'll start sweating because I get really concerned about, like, what I'm saying, and then I start forgetting what I'm saying, um, and I just go into, like, some rant. Um, but, dude, to answer your question, how do you get out of your head in the present moment in social situations? You know, I let it happen. That's, I let whatever I'm feeling happen. If I feel nervous, I just accept the fact that I'm nervous in a situation. And I get really self-conscious because my hands get really sweaty. Like, that's something I can't control. Even when I'm not nervous, my hands get sweaty sometimes. So then I get self-conscious because my hands are sweaty. And then I'm like, does the other person think I'm nervous? Do you know what I mean? So, honestly, dude, I just accept it. And I think that acceptance of who I am and the fact that, like, I have sweaty hands sometimes and I get nervous and like forget what I'm going to say sometimes is fine. I just let that happen. And the more that I talk about it and the more that I, the more that I just like live with that on my sleeve, the less it actually happens. You know what I mean? So I think this is just a, like the point I want to make is just whatever feelings you have, just go into them and just live them. Never try to deny or block the feelings you're having because then situations like anxiety or being you know trying to be present it, it would probably come on worse and I've, i that was like the story of me all the way from like high school to college um yeah. but yeah so in terms of like being in the present moment man just like just decide to listen attentively to whoever's speaking and that little voice inside your head that keeps talking you don't have to shut it up but just actually concentrate on what the words, like the words that people are saying. That was a big thing I used to struggle with. So now when I catch myself with my mind wandering as people are talking, I try to listen to like every syllable that they're saying and listen really, really closely. So that'd be my advice. I'd also add that you should, all everything you said, Dan, and then also just don't start coming up with stories around how you're feeling. You know, if you start to feel nervous and your hands are sweaty or if, like, you start to, like, get flushed or overwhelmed, like, don't start to think to yourself, like, oh, like, what are people thinking about me? Or, like, I'm feeling sweaty because of this, this, this. Just feel it and just let it be. Just let it, just be with it. Just put your shoulder in it. Go into the experience and just let, just be with it. For sure. I will say, though, sometimes you can't block that feeling. Sometimes those thoughts cannot be blocked. And so you have to just live 
with the fact that the feelings are going to happen and you're sitting there inside your own head and you're going to just sit inside your own head and still try to be as present as possible. Because I think like the struggle that I had and I know a lot of pe people with social anxiety have is like you can't control those thoughts. You can try um, and sometimes get over them, but sometimes your mind is just going to wander. And I think it's okay to just accept that too, bro. You know? Um, yeah. What I'm saying is just like, like, of course, like you, it's really hard. If you have to train, it's a muscle to be able to control your thoughts. So this kind of stuff happens over time. It's what I'm pointing out is just, uh, be aware that like you're having a physical experience and like, you don't have to justify it. Like you don't have to be like, Oh, like, this is happening because of this, you know, you can be like, okay, yeah, I'm having these, this, um, this experience right now. It's okay. It's okay. Sure. The show, William David, how can I become a senior athlete with a champion's mindset? Brandon, you want to answer this one first? A senior athlete? Dude, I think you just take it one day at a time. You do the best you can with what you have. This is how you get good at anything. You just stack every day on top of each other. You, you look at what you've done the day before and you say, can I match that? And can I go an inch farther? And that's how you become a champion. Dude, tell him about, the, tell him about our boy in Utah. Tell him. Oh, yeah. About our 83-year-old uh, homie who's jumping rope like a ninja with one lung and one fake hip and is still doing the thing. And he keeps getting knocked back by these surgeries he has and all these issues he has with his body. And what he does, he just says to himself, hey, listen, I'm going to just try to be better than I did yesterday. Maybe that's not as good as what I did 10 years ago, but I'm going to do better than I did yesterday. And you just stack on top. Yeah, right. absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that uh, like, it really is just don't, don't think of uh, your age. At, like, your age does not define you. And like this 83-year-old dude, he's one of the most like, positive – you know, he's doing the thing, skipping rope. Like, he doesn't care how old he is. He's just someone going after it. So I think this goes back to the whole, like, age doesn't – it doesn't matter. It's not a thing. It's, it's not like a, a thing that defines you and what level of athlete you are. So you're an athlete, bro. You're an athlete. Hussein asks, Oi, Oi, what are your thoughts Oi. on extended fasting hours, maybe up to a full week of only drinking water, any side effects or irreparable damages I should know of? My recommendation would be don't do that because I think anything in extremes uh, usually isn't going to be good for you. Just as a general rule of thumb of life for your body and, and life in general, I would say if you want to do like one 24-hour fast a week, like that could definitely work. That's not a bad idea. Some Dan and I do from time to time, but in general – try to get your body in like a pretty consistent rhythm of like knowing kind of like what to expect from you and understand that you don't have to do anything super extreme, like not eat for a week. You can just eat the right amount of food every day. Um, I don't know. Dan, what do you think? I think uh, if this is a religious related question, if you're asking this because it's of, uh, if it's part of a religion, that's totally cool, man. Like do whatever you want to do or even if it's not, um, I'm just going to give you some of the like sign, the science behind this kind of thing. Um, extended fast, I do believe, is very beneficial for the longevity of your life. And there have been a lot of research studies that show that fasting for a, like doing a, an extended water fast of a few days or a week can be beneficial. But please understand that if you do that, you will start to – I'm not going to say that you're going to lose a bunch of muscle. But if you go that long without getting cer certain macronutrients – that is going to, your body will require that it's going to start eating some of your muscle because it needs energy. And it can't get that from food because you're fasted. So it's going to go to your muscles to get that energy. So um, I don't think that, you know, also I would say too, the only side effect of that is if you've never done that, your body's definitely going to probably be in shock. Like your body's not going to like that you're not feeding it for seven days. Um, so I would agree with Brandon, man. Like I, I think, uh, I wouldn't like I, Brandon and I would not go out and recommend this to people. If you want to try it um, because you want to, you know, test your body and and kind of detox, I think that's a great idea. But just understand that, like, if you're trying to put on a bunch of muscle, then I would definitely not recommend doing a seven day fast like that. So it really just depends on what your goals are and what you are okay with sacrificing 
um, in order to achieve whatever result you want. <laughs> Next question. I can't read Arabic, so um, I'm just going to read the question, but thank you for asking it. For intermittent fasting, how much BCAAs should we use? Well, I would say in your fasted state, try to get 5, 10 grams of uh, branched chain amino acids while you're fasted. That's a uh, general rule of thumb. Yeah, I agree with Brandon. Steven Williams, what's up, my dude? Zen dudes, what was your parents' reaction to you doing the thing, i.e. moving to New York with $49 after getting an education and then moving to South America because the cost of living is cheaper? Let me tell you, my friend, I didn't move to New York with $49. I moved there with $12 and about $49,000 in debt. So I was in a terrible financial situation, and uh, I'm not going to lie. I never. I don't know if I've told this. I think I've told this story before. I was sitting on, maybe not, when I moved to New York, like the day I decided I was going to move to New York, I would use all my sick days when I worked in Washington, D.C., and I would take the train up to New York and hang out with my cousins and like go on job interviews. And I was sitting on at, at this park. It's called the Williamsburg Bridge Park, I think. They're like the w Williamsburg Park. And I was looking at the skyline of New York, and I was about to go see the last apartment that I ended up living in, which was a complete shit. Um, and I was sitting there, and it was rain. It was starting to rain, and I was calling my parents, and my mom and dad were like, Daniel, you are absolutely not moving to New York. You have literally no money at all, and you don't have a job. And I remember feeling really bummed out and super pissed because I was like, I was just like, when people say like, I can't do something, I get really angry and I'm like, oh yeah, seriously, you don't think I can do that? So like, I remember sitting on this picnic bench and just being like, I'm moving next week. I don't care. I'm going to sell all my PC and move. And uh, it wasn't a week later, but like a month later, that's what I did. Um, so my parents were definitely not supportive of that at first, but then once I got a job and like all that stuff, then it was, it was totally fine. Um... And then moving to South America, my parents were super concerned. Like they were definitely like, Daniel, why did you quit your super cushy corporate job in New York to move to South America and start? And like, now you don't have a job. Now you don't have any sense of security. Like they were definitely, they're very supportive now. At first they were absolutely not supportive at all. I think my parents have always kind of like trust me and been like, yo, Brian, just go, uh, Go figure out. They're like, well, you know, any parent, I think, like, y you don't know what you don't know. So, like, when I went to, like, Columbia initially, like, I went basically, like, knowing, like, a couple dudes, and that's it, and never being there before, and just booking a flight without a return ticket. And they're like, okay, like, are you going to be okay and, like, safe down there? But, um, yeah, it wasn't a lot of friction. Definitely a little bit of doubt, but, like, my parents have been, like, pretty, pretty solid throughout the whole process. Nice. I wouldn't say my parents were like, they're not the kind of people, like, they weren't mad. Like, my parents, like, I love my parents to death. They weren't like, they weren't like, oh, you're throwing your life away. They were just, like, super concerned. They were very, like, you know, Daniel, we don't understand what you're doing, um, you know, and it kind of seemed to me at the time, like, I was like, why don't you support me? Like, I'm doing what I love. But really what I've realized as I've, like, grown through this process is that they're just really worried that their son was just doing something that like they didn't really understand. Andres. Hey guys. Hey Andres. I've always been told that after working out, you should try to eat as soon as possible because your body needs to rebuild properly. But sometimes I have to do the five, the thing at 5 a.m. before work or 11 p.m. after my day is done. The problem is my eating window is from 2 to 10. What do you guys think should be a solution? Brandon, hit him with the, hit him with the solution. With, yeah, I'm going to hit you with the science. And science says uh, <clears throat> all that talk around like needing to eat right after you work out is actually pseudoscience. There's not any definitive research that can back that up. It's really about how much you're eating in the entire day. And maybe if you're a bodybuilder, you'd be trying to like get those final inches and like maybe it'd help you a little bit. But if you're not a bodybuilder, don't worry about it, man. Just make sure you eat the right amount of food in your whole day and you're going to be great. Totally. And if you and if you want, man, like the only thing I would add to that is like if you do work out at 5 a.m., you know, consider changing your eating window a little bit. Like if you're working out that early, shift your eating window so that you're breaking your fast at, let's say, 11 a.m. 
and then you're closing that off around like 7, 7 p.m. That, that's like a, a strategy I think will help you maintain a lot of that muscle. And then you're not going super long after that. Like if you're working out at 5 a.m., not eating until 2 p.m. would personally just be hard for, for me. Um, so I would think about moving that, that eating window up. Because remember, it doesn't matter when you have the eating window. The most important thing is you just condense that and then fast um, the other time. So, Howard asks, is water fasting a good idea? I've watched videos on how it can be a good detox. Some advice. Thanks, dudes. No problem, Howard. Absolutely. Water yes. fasting can help with cell regeneration. Means like your body is being re regenerating new healthy cells. Because basically, <laughs> when you go this long period of time um, where you're eating constantly, your body is spending energy on digestion and just making sure it can process all the food. So when you give yourself some time to chill and not eat, your body can focus on other things like cell regeneration and making you healthier. Yes, yes. So check it out. I'm doing a little water fasting. I did have some coffee with some milk and I had athletic greens, so it's possible I actually broke my fast. But most days, I don't take athletic greens till later. And so I just do a little intermittent water fasting. And I don't know about you, Brandon, but I love the feeling of like, drinking tons of water and not eating and like peeing a lot and like I feel like I'm cleaning my system. You yeah. Feel that way? Yeah. Like I just feel good when I feel do that. Good. Alphon. Ooh, this is a good one. Alphon, what was your dream when you were kids? Parentheses astronaut, Formula 1 driver. Did you and then on parentheses, did you accomplish it? Play as mm. My dream was to play for the New York Knicks. Um, I have not accomplished that, but maybe my sub dream will be because I'm not going to play for the Knicks. So I suck at basketball. Um, will be to maybe be a sports psychologist for the next one day or some kind of like mental coach because that is like my main passion. And, uh, I think that could def, I think that's definitely a possibility it could still very well happen. And, uh, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah. I hear you, man. Well, first, Brandon, by, uh, until I was in, like, I think third grade, my parents told me that I wanted to be a mechanic. My dream my dream was to be a mechanic, and I would say that. And I remember as a kid being like, I want to work on cars. Um, then I got older and realized uh, I don't care about cars. And then I wanted to be – I got really into skateboarding and BMX. And then I was – Dave Mira, the BMX rider, was my idol. So then to, like, eighth grade, I wanted to be a pro BMX rider, and I would, like, Dude, my parents were so pissed, man. There's so many dug up dirt things in my yard and on our banks because I would just ride ramps like after school all day. Um, and then when I got to high school and like, you know, as college kind of went on, then I decided I just want to be a professional dancer. And that's still my dream. And now my dream is just like my biggest dream ever would be to make hip hop music videos and dance in them for like 10 seconds and be known as like this producer that makes videos and then like has a 10 second cameo of just like dancing. Um, did we accomplish that? I kind of feel like Zen Dude Fitness is my dream. So like I, in a way I do feel like I did accomplish that because the fact that like Brandon and I are sitting here having this conversation, like I am really overwhelmed with gratitude that we get to do this. So in a way, like I really, I really do feel like we are absolutely like living. I, I do feel like I'm living out my dream for sure. Kathy asks, this is not so much a question as a comment. So Kathy does not ask. She comments. I was looking over the list to see how far the Zen Dude movement is reaching. Holy crap. You guys are all over the world. Very excited for you both. You're doing something fantastic and really making a difference. Congrats. Yo, Kathy. Do you, okay, Brandon and I started this, but do you realize like Zen Dude Fitness is what it is because of you? You guys are the ones who are spreading this around, you know, all the countries you're from, and you're the ones posting in the group. So we super, super appreciate that. But understand that like you guys are the ones who are responsible for continuing to grow this movement. So thank you guys. Yeah, with Dan said. Yeah. You guys, I, I said this on an Instagram store. I did an Instagram live last night. You guys aren't following us on Instagram. Follows ND Fitness on Instagram. We do lives all the time. And I was just talking to the people I was on there with. I was like, it is so awesome that you guys all want to like take this positive action in your own life. And the fact that like people do the thing, 
that's why this works because then they transform their bodies, their lives, and then their friends and family are like, whoa, like, what are you doing? And then they're like, oh, well, you know, I started doing this like jump rope thing and like I'm eating this certain way. And so it's all built on you guys taking action and doing the thing. So thank you for doing the thing because that's what this all builds on. Absolutely. Barry asks, does working out in a warmer environment burn more calories? I remember reading that you burn more calories when it's cold because your body has to work harder. According to the, and now Brandon and I are not uh, experts on this topic, but according to the American Council of Exercise, which let's be honest, I don't know how reliable this is, you burn more fat and calories and can exercise longer when you do so in warm temperatures, according to the American Council on Exercise. But for overall, like weight loss and fat loss, the difference between how much you would lose in cold versus warm weather, I'm sure is so small that it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things like Brandon was talking about. Also, everyone needs to understand this. Like a lot of people put uh, scientific re research or even peer reviewed research, which is like the standard for like what we should listen to on like a huge pedestal. But there's been so many conflicting research articles of like, this is something we should accept, but this is not something we should accept. And they completely conflict with each other. Like, how many studies have come out saying, like, saturated fat's awful for you? And, and like, especially through, like, 70s, 80s, 90s. And now all this research is emerging saying, like, oh, no, it's not. Saturated fat's actually, like, doesn't matter. Like, the thing that's really worse for you is, like, sugar. And, like, this game is going to go on forever. There's also a lot of people who do research that, like, they're not having as much integrity. They have the power to publish peer-reviewed research. Um, but maybe, like, they still get it through and it's not as ethical or there's cognitive biases around the research. So do the research you can. There's, like, a few things that Dan and I always talk about that are, like, things that can't be refuted, things like the importance of, like, the amount of food you're consuming, uh, getting the right distribution of macronutrients, getting enough water in your system, getting enough sleep for yourself. There's all these, there's a handful of things that are irrefutable at this point. Beyond that, like, and, That's probably, you know, and, you know? and dude, you're right. Like the things that are irrefutable are just like, it's like common sense, right? Like, I feel like if you, um, like your mental state, if you're a happy person, you're, you're going to have good energy inside of you. That's going to help you live a longer life and, and be healthier because you feel good. Like, obviously if you get a lot of sleep, like if you get enough sleep, you're going to wake up and, and feel good. Or if you drink enough water. So I feel like, yeah, don't concentrate so much on this is to our audience like don't concentrate so much on these like like research studies that are like trying to find like certain substances or like little things to nitpick at and just do do the things that logically are going to make you feel good and be a happy person i do believe that like being a happy person is going to be a bigger determinant of how long you live not so much like if you eat bacon or not Gurjeet. Now the sex question from Gurjeet. <laughs> Does masturbation affect weight loss? Depends on uh, if you got a big load of <laughs> right? <laughs> Does master Gurjeet, you ask us a sexual question every week, man. What I will say is, dude, if you're looking at porn, stop looking at porn. Stop looking at porn. That is going to desensitize you and there's a ton of research out there as far as like the damage that porn does to your mind. So if you're just like masturbating, like right now, I don't have my girlfriend, so I'm trying to a lot and that's totally cool and I'm fine with it. But don't look at porn and masturbate because there is a ton of research out there that, that shows that doing that creates like this artificial feeling and artificial release of dopamine that can hurt your sexual performance in general with with real people with real connections so if you're if it if this is anything to do with like porn stop looking at porn that would be my recommendation i think dan let me just mention this right now you should make this a restricted video when you upload it to youtube because we could get in trouble for all this because i want to go even deeper on this and say that you're right like um the stuff around like porn like it does desensitize you because a lot of you you're maybe you're watching like like three girls have a threesome with this one dude and they're all like drop dead gorgeous. And like, it's cool that like, you're maybe not going to replicate that experience, but if that's your expectation, 
uh, like it may hinder your ability to perform. Like there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on in your head when you put yourself in these situations. So like personally, I've like I've lived with my my wifey here since October. Haven't really had much time apart. But when I do a little, I do it to like past memories or I do it to her. I use my imagination mm-hmm. instead of porn because uh, I don't want to condition anything that's gonna like. Yeah, or condition anything that's not real, like you said. You don't want to have this expectation of something that's not actually occurring in your your real life because you're not going to appreciate the sexual experiences you have with with real people. And like, I feel that real sexual connection and experience is one of the best things about like being a human in this world, like sharing that with with a real human being. So just something something to think about. Something to think about. I think the biggest part, right? It probably like. It takes away the emotion from it, huh? Yeah. Like when you see it as like this physical act, when like the most wonderful, beautiful part about having sex is like connecting with someone, feeling the emotion, the love, and the, and the connection, and the, the lust, everything that comes with that. Nyla asks, who painted the red, white, and black painting you guys sit in front of? Um, that would be, if you can't see that in this video, there we go. Now you can. Um, who painted that? Let me show you. Can you see that? Yeah. We don't actually know. I think it was in Brandon's house when he's when he when he rented that apartment. It was there. This is a furnished apartment, so I don't know. Lily, how are you? How you doing? Thanks you for doing? asking. Do you guys have rest days? If so, what does the perfect one look like? Parentheses. Kind of like when you say. What's the perfect date? But in rest day edition, winky face. <laughs> nice, Lily. Okay. Nice. I'm glad she included that because I would have gave her like the knee jerk reaction of like, there is no perfect rest day. But because she's, you made the analogy of the perfect date, I would say a perfect rest day would be like some, you know, maybe some long walks, maybe some light yoga. Uh, don't say maybe say what would be yours I think she, she okay, wants to okay. know like what is Brandon Epstein's like perfect rest day perfect rest day here it is wake up after a nice night's nice sleep get up you know drink a lot of water um, maybe have a, a nice Americano or espresso go for a walk in the morning sun uh, still faceted maybe um you know, late afternoon, do a little bit of light yoga in the park, somewhere outside, getting some sunlight on me. Uh, maybe walk back, go break it fast, like early afternoon, um, just chilling, maybe do some meditation park while I'm there. Uh, just, yeah, being outside, doing some stretching, moving my body, but not with any, like, vigorous intention, just giving it some love. Maybe, you know, late afternoon, early evening, having a little sex, you know, just like... Ah. Give up and someone else a little bit of love, uh, and then you know having a big a big feast in, in the evening. Not not too big, but like nutrient dense. Lots of like salad and like you know macro friendly. Like maybe a chicken salad, some pesto, um, maybe some fresh fruit for dessert, and then uh, you know going to sleep with a nice book. And that's like I don't know, it's a great rest day to me. All right, here's my perfect rest day. I wake up, right? I'm with two horses I had last night. I f*** horses. Then I get on my pet dragon and I fly to Chicago for the Bulls yeah. game. Serious, serious rest day, perfect rest day. I feel like I actually did this day like a lot of weekends in Columbia. Um, like over the past six months, I would do this almost every Sunday. Wake up, stay fasted, uh, drink a lot of water, have a little bit of coffee, uh, answer the comments from the dojo, like do some light computer work. And then around 11, I would smoke a little bit of marijuana. I'm not saying you guys have to. I'm just saying like this is what I actually do on most Sundays. Smoke a little weed, get my camera. And Sundays for me, like my rest days were all about creating and like trying new things out with my, with my camera. So I would go on these walks and I would just walk for like 10 miles and just practice like new angles of shots and I would listen to music and I'd be fasted for most of it and then at the end of the day I'd walk home and I'd do the same thing as Brandon. I'd have like a big nutrient-dense kind of meal 
And I would either watch like a, a Joe Rogan podcast episode or something on YouTube that, that's just like fun. Or I would, I would watch a movie. Um, that's how I like to spend my, my rest days for sure. Creating. Oh, and this didn't happen all the time, but sex. I totally agree with you, dude. There's nothing better than some Sunday sex. Jim asks, do you buy your sweatpants ripped or have they gotten like that from lots of doing the thing? Oh, I, I guess I'm the only one with ripped sweatpants. <laughs> Shit. I, I bought them ripped, but uh, Brandon, I didn't tell you this, bro. There's holes, like, there's a hole this big in my crotch now. And, uh, and I ripped the back pocket of my black ones. So I got a hole in the crotch. Like, now there's holes all over them. So, Jim, to answer your question, um, I bought the sweatpants with holes in them. But now because of doing the thing, there's way too many holes in them. And I need to get new sweatpants. And uh, can I just ask you guys something, like the audience? Like... What the f*** do you guys care so much about the, the holes in my sweatpants? Jim, I don't think you care because I think you're, like, actually asking. But, like, what's up with all these f***ing who, like, who are like, oh, dude, you think you're so cool, you have rips in your sweatpants. Like, it f***ing looks cool, okay? Like, knock it off with this, like, you think you're so cool? I'm like, yeah, I think I look cool. Why the hell else would I buy them? Like, people make no sense to me, bro. Like, dude, if, I'm going to uh, buy new Gary ones and I'm going to cut holes in them. Dude, Gary Vaynerchuk had such a good rant that I watched last night that I, that you could tell he was like pissed in the way that you're pissed about people paying attention to shit that doesn't matter instead of doing the thing. That's basically what he was talking about. He was like, because he made a video of like, you know, you have, what does your 18 hours look like? So he's like, I sleep six hours and I have 18 hours to just do the thing. Like, go in and like try to make my, my dreams come true. And he's like, why the f are people commenting saying like, ooh, I can't sleep for only six hours. He's like, I don't care if you sleep for six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours. He's like, the whole point of it is like, what are you doing in the time that you're awake? He's like, everyone gets caught up in these like things that don't matter at all. Yeah. And you're not paying attention to what the actual thing is, which is like, yo, like for you, for like, we're just do the workout, stop getting hung up in the pants. For Gary, it's like, just listen to the advice and do the thing and don't get don't pay attention to sleep in six hours or eight hours. Sleep as much as you need. Dude, it's almost like people are, like some of the people, it's almost like they're saying, dude, Dan, I, I would be able to do this workout if you didn't have holes in your sweatpants. But if you didn't have holes, I'd be able to do it. It's so funny to me, man. Yeah, guys, stop, stop caring about stuff that uh, doesn't matter. Do the thing. Boop. Joanna asks, how about a meal plan for vegetarians? No meat, no fish, only or no seafood, eggs, or dairy. Go ahead. Okay, so a vegan plan, then, I guess, is what you're asking for. If there's no eggs or fish or anything like that. Um, here's the thing. At Zendu Fitness, we created this whole movement for people who want to get on board with the movement that we've created, right? So we're attracting people in who really like to jump rope, who want to move their body in fun ways, who want to have fun moving their body, exercising. You can do whatever you want regarding, like, the nutrition, but we don't live that lifestyle, so... As of now, like we're not going to create that because we're not going to use it. We want to have authenticity around what we're teaching. I don't ever want to tell you to do something that I would never do. And as of right now, I would not eat that diet. So that's why I'm not going to create that. Like you wouldn't want someone to coach you. Like you wouldn't want to train for like a boxing fight from someone who's only ever trained in like jujitsu. Like that's that's kind of what I'm getting at here. Like, you don't want to see and create that because, like, that's not what we do. It's not our expertise. So that's what I have to say about that. Perfect answer. Perfect answer. Jamie asks, any tips to help with knee discomfort? I feel knee discomfort during lunges and air squats or with explosive movements like double unders. Doing the thing seems to be helping with the, with the discomfort as it's not as bad. I think great form is going to go a long way in helping with this. I'm going to assume that when you jump rope, you're coming more than one or two centimeters off the ground. You should only come so far off the ground to be able to get the rope just barely under. And that will come with time. Focus on form there. And for your other body weight exercises, make sure that you are always, like when you're lunging, you're bringing your, your knee over your heel and you're pushing up through your heel. And so you can really, uh, so you can just have good biomechanics when you're when you're activating your muscles and your glutes and your hamstrings, otherwise your joints are going to be out of 
out of balance when your biome can tear off, it's gonna create more stress on your on your bones, on your on your tendons, the things that make it hurt. How's that possible? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and I would just say like also inflammation might play a role in that. So make sure you're eating a lot of vegetables, make sure you're hydrated so that your joints and everything uh, feel well lubricated and you don't have the inflammation could be a part of that as well. So I would just make sure to not only hit your macros, but also get those micronutrients and eat a lot of vegetables and make sure to stay hydrated. Shannon asks, do you guys have a day job or is ZDF your full-time job now? ZDF is the only thing that I've even thought about for the last almost two years now. It's, a, it's been about 20, no, probably like 19 to 20 months where literally I haven't thought about anything with real intention besides Zen New Fitness. So the answer is, I guess, does that answer pretty well? Yeah, this is, I mean, Shannon, this has been, Zen Dude Fitness has been our full-time day job, night job, every kind of job since we started Zen Dude Fitness. Um, and I think, I'm not sure why you're like, uh, like why you might be asking, but one thing I will say is like, I think, you know, story time for a sec here, you guys have to understand that when Brandon and I first started this, like it was a struggle, like we weren't making a lot of money and it was really difficult to, to get by. And anyone considering starting something, I'm not saying that you should just quit your job and have no plan, but if you like Zen dude fitness guys, I think it's important to note that you guys might see one six minute video a day and you might see like five Instagram posts. And so you might think, Oh, well this is like, you know, they have something else that's getting them by guys. I've never worked so much in my life. Like we work in order to get a six minute video out three to four times a week, we work 16 hours a day. And so there is no way that we could have been like, there is absolutely no way that we could have had day jobs and have Zen dude fitness be where it's at right now. Because and that's a lesson for anyone starting a business. Like if you have a plan and you are working a day job and then you're kind of doing something at night, at some point you got to burn the ships and go all in. If you want it, if you want it to be, to reach its maximum potential, you have to take the risk of going absolutely all in. And that risk is real. Like Brandon and I did run the risk of like running out of money and not knowing if this was going to work. But we had that belief and that faith that Zen Dude Fitness is going to work and it's going to work for a long time and we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that that remains like that so just a lesson for anyone who's like looking to start a business go all in yeah dude uh this is going to be like big time gary v promotion but gary ranchuk again like i think it was maybe the same video that he was going on his rant in last night i think it was the same rant he was saying like this stuff is binary like you're either in or you're not in. And that's what Dan and I realized. We were in. So it didn't matter what it took. It doesn't matter like how poor we got. It doesn't matter how many times we get punched in the face because it's not working. We're in until it works. And it's binary. You're in and you're not in. So if you want to do it, like do it. And maybe that means you do have to have a part-time job to support you, but like it doesn't matter. Do it for as long as you need. Like it's just a mindset. You're flipping the switch to on or off. You're in or you're out. And just to anyone who might have this question, Brandon and I did not get any money. We did not get any help. Like we used a little bit of savings that I had from my previous job. And like we were poor. As shit. Like we didn't have any money when we started Zen Dude Fitness. And we had no help from our parents, from, from friends, from investors. Like it was nothing. We had to scrape everything we possibly could to make this work. And so I just, I hope that that is inspiring to some people who feel like oh i don't have the resources whatever brandon is exactly right it's binary you're either in or you're out athletic greens green juice supplement that we take to make sure we get our micronutrients all up in our body because sometimes we don't eat enough vegetables or fruits and this is the great supplement to get you there or if you do get lots of micronutrients through fruits and vegetables and you want to just get bonus points and make sure that your body just has all the nutrients it needs and more, great option right here. Protein, um, tastes great, it's grass fed. High integrity protein just because um, there's just nothing in it except for grass fed whey protein, cocoa powder, vanilla flavor, chocolate chip flavor, 
stevia. Like when you look at most proteins, it was like a thousand ingredients. Like this is very simple, but it's, it's as close to a whole food for a supplement as you're going to get. Yeah, dude, that's so funny that you mentioned uh, putting it in the fridge. My mom, I'm home at my parents' house, and my mom saw the athletic greens, and she was like, why aren't you putting that in the fridge? And I was like, mom, you don't put athletic greens in the fridge. And she, yeah, she read the label. She was like, it says put it in the fridge. And I was like, oh, my God, I haven't been doing that. So now mine's in the fridge. It says it right there. We've never read that. I've never read that. 90 days. Do you think maybe our athletic greens, like, goes bad kind of? Like, it doesn't work as well? It's not refrigerated? I don't know. Maybe. I feel like we go through it fast enough, though, that it's not like – like, if you left it for like, – if you take one scoop a week, then, yeah, maybe after six months. But I don't know. I feel like I always go through it in, like, three or four weeks. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the best jump rope in the world that I've ever used. It's straight magic. It's a cross rope, agility rope, by cross rope. It's linked in the description below. It's the one we use every day. And it's so smooth. It feels so good. It makes you feel like a jump rope ninja. No, it's pretty crazy. Every it's 10% off inscription, which like 10%, I know it's not that exciting, but it's something. And forget about the 10%. Like every time someone gets one, they post in a four-week challenge group or in the dojo Facebook groups, and they're like, oh my God, I wish I would have bought this like a year ago. This makes my jump rope ability so much better. Like the testimonials are so overwhelmingly positive that it's like, doesn't matter how much it costs. I mean, I know it does some people, but like, it doesn't cost so much where you have to put like a loan down. It's like forty nine bucks, forty five, forty nine bucks on the internet. Yeah, I recommend it, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to again thank you for everything that you do for this amazing community. We want to thank you for tuning in for another episode of Ask the Zen Dudes. And again, I want to say thank you guys as we make our way out to Los Angeles and start this new chapter of Zen Dude Fitness. What this means is we'll be able to see a lot more of you in person. Uh, we're very excited about that. And uh, thank you, guys. That's all I got. Brandon, any closing statements? Echoing of what you said. Super grateful for all of you. Keep the positivity coming. Uh, more positivity, more love, more doing the thing. That's it. Deuces. Deuces.